The bombshell lawsuit filed against Vince McMahon, John Laurinaitis, and WWE reportedly could have ramifications when it comes to possible Royal Rumble return plans for Brock Lesnar tomorrow night at the Premium Live event. Plenty of details in that. Plus, Mustafa Ali is coming to TNA Wrestling after a vignette hyping up his debut with the company aired last night. Shawn Michaels has revealed he prevented LA Knight from being fired several times during Knight's tenure with NXT. Anthony Agogo announces he is re-signed with AEW, and CM Punk pays Cora Jade a visit during her rehab. Hey guys, welcome back to Rest News 365. Hope everyone is doing very well. As always, there are plenty of news stories to get into in the world of professional wrestling. Let's start off talking about the ramifications when it comes to that bombshell lawsuit yesterday involving Vince McMahon, WWE, and John Laurinaitis. Now, the fallout from this huge lawsuit that dropped yesterday involving Vince McMahon and allegations of sex trafficking against him will likely have very far-reaching consequences. And according to a new report, those consequences could include changes to WWE plans for Saturday's Royal Rumble Premium Live event. Sean Ross Sapp of Fight for Select is reporting that with the onset of WrestleMania season, Brock Lesnar was set to make his return to WWE television sooner rather than later, and that the Royal Rumble had been discussed as a potential return date. Now, Fightful didn't confirm that Lesnar was set to be a participant in the men's Royal Rumble match, but given the nature of the match, it would be an obvious way to bring him back to WWE television. However, Fightful sources have indicated that plans for Lesnar's return could now be changed due to his likely role in the Vince McMahon lawsuit, which alleges that McMahon shared pornographic images of the plaintiff, former WWE employee Janelle Grant, with a world-famous athlete and former UFC heavyweight champion with whom WWE was actively trying to sign to a new contract and ultimately did sign the contract. Now, the Wall Street Journal's report on the lawsuit claimed that people familiar with the matter had identified Brock Lesnar as the athlete in question. Having initially decided to retire from in-ring competition following his loss to Drew McIntyre at WrestleMania 36, Lesnar returned at SummerSlam in 2021, a timeline that matches that of the unnamed former UFC heavyweight champion described in Grant's lawsuit. Grant alleges that McMahon used the promise of sexual encounters with her as a means to enticing the athlete to sign a new contract with WWE, though circumstances conspired to prevent any such encounter from actually happening. The incident represents just three pages of the 67-page lawsuit that accuses McMahon and former WWE head of talent relations John Laurinaitis of, quote, physical and emotional abuse, sexual assault, and trafficking. Vince McMahon has denied the allegations in a statement that we spoke about in yesterday's video. So as of right now, we don't really have any confirmation on if Brock Lesnar is or is not going to be at the Royal Rumble this weekend. If he's going to make his return to WWE television, most were assuming that was going to be the case. As of right now, we don't know. What is your reaction to all of this? What is your reaction to the lawsuit? What is your reaction to Brock Lesnar's WWE return to television possibly being scrapped because of it? Do you think we'll now see the Beast at all on the road to WrestleMania? Do you think we'll still see him at the Royal Rumble this weekend? Do you think he's going to be pulled? Do you think they're going to wait until maybe a later date to see how this all plays out? Do you think we'll even see Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania or back on WWE television ever again? Let me know your thoughts, your reaction, your predictions in the comments section below. Now, Mustafa Ali is uh, making quite a name for himself in his post-WWE career. Former WWE superstar Mustafa Ali has appeared with TNA Wrestling months after he was released by WWE. The former Retribution member featured in a vignette on the January 25, 2024 episode of TNA Impact, which appeared at the end of the show. In a vignette, Ali, who was dressed in a suit, delivered a message with two people mimicking Secret Service members standing behind him. Quote, change, often it happens gradually over time, but sometimes it happens in a flash. TNA has recently undergone a change, gradually, years in the making, but now it's time for a different kind of change, one that's immediate and ignited by the introduction of an X Factor. I'm Mustafa Ali and I approve of this message, he concluded, concluded smiling at the camera. Now, following his WWE exit, Ali began a world tour campaign wrestling around the world with his politician gimmick. Ali has wrestled in a few independent pro wrestling promotions and also GCW since leaving WWE, while a vignette of his also aired on New Japan Pro Wrestling Television recently. After his WWE non-compete clause expired, Ali announced the Mustafa Ali 2024 campaign and promised change is coming. Of course, he's set to be competing for New Japan in Chicago with tickets already selling out very quickly for that event. The 
The gimmick is similar to the one he had in NXT last year, which he debuted a few weeks before his release. Ali joins the likes of former WWE colleagues like Nick Nemeth, formerly known as Dolph Ziggler, Ash by Elegance, formerly known as Dana Brooke, who have made TNA their new home. It remains to be seen when Ali will actually officially in-person debut in TNA, but he has several upcoming matches for promotions such as New Japan Pro Wrestling, Progress, and House of Glory. It's not been confirmed if he's actually put pen to paper on a contract or if this is just going to be on a handshake agreement. We'll have to wait and see indeed how that plays out. But what are your thoughts on Mustafa Ali heading to TNA Wrestling? Do you think that's a good pickup for them? And do you think ultimately Ali will eventually sign a contract or a bit like Will Ospreay recently and Kazuchika Okada, Okada, is he just going to come in for a few appearances? Let me know your thoughts about that as well. Now, LA Knight is one of the biggest stars, one of the biggest, uh, highest merch selling stars in WWE currently. But in an interview about LA Knight for ESPN, Shawn Michaels revealed that he saved the top star from being cut in NXT multiple times. In the piece, Michaels shared his belief in what LA Knight could bring to WWE, noting that he came in with impeccable skills from day one. However, the enthusiasm over LA Knight wasn't particularly shared amongst higher level decision makers in the company. While Michaels didn't name names, he did reference an ominous presence and their ever-present concern about LA Knight. Michael said, quote, I would tell them all the time there is this guy, LA Knight. When people say a WWE guy or a Vince guy, he was effing it. I was trying to tell them, lose the 3-8. He never looked to me like he had any mileage on him. To me, he was still brand freaking new. The piece noted that Michael shared that LA Knight was on the cut list in NXT several times. However, the heartbreak kid would use a savvy strategy to continue to plead his case for Knight, saying he would continue to need Knight in storylines. Michael said, quote, I never lied. I did always have him in stuff, but there are a couple of people that I knew from this mythical age thing wasn't fitting their qualifications, but I always kept him in storyline. So my excuse was we can't get rid of them now. Michaels would then go on to note that he would take care to try and finesse a certain someone into seeing the value of LA Knight, leading to a full-on argument over the difference of opinion on age. Michael said, quote, They never effing paid attention to us. I was trying to finesse a certain someone, but all he would see is the one number, the 3-8. Someone who's damn near my age, and I'm having an argument with them. Why, uh, were you old when you were 38? LA Knight certainly has a big weekend ahead of him as this Saturday at the Royal Rumble. He will have another chance to win WWE's most coveted title because Roman Reigns puts his undisputed WWE Universal Championship on the line in a fatal four-way match against LA Knight, Randy Orton and AJ Styles at the premium live event. So thank goodness for Shawn Michaels, I suppose. Now, this is quite an interesting one because we haven't seen that much of Anthony, Anthony Agogo, but he's actually signed a new AEW contract. Now, while Anthony Agogo may have been absent from in-ring action in AEW on television, it doesn't mean he hasn't made some appearances. Anthony Agogo has opened up about re-signing with AEW after having been seen rarely in the company over the past several years. Agogo is an Olympic gold medal winning boxer who also happens to be from the UK, hence his most recent appearance in AEW was at AEW All-In in in London at Wembley Stadium. Before recently making an in-ring return back in November 2023 for two dark matches ahead of AEW Collision, Agogo had been absent from competition. Agogo said on a recent episode of AEW Unrestricted, quote, I think there is a stigma attached to me now. Maybe I create this in my own head. I think the stigma attached to me now is I have all this potential. I haven't gotten the experience yet. How do you get experience when you're not given experience? You can go on the indies and do a little bit. There's working there and there's working AEW. I'm in this weird situation where I think there's a lot of potential around me and Tony kind of signed me and re-signed me. He obviously sees something in me. I have this aura that people haven't got because they haven't done what I've done in real life, but it's like I need to get the experience. It's catch 22. What do you do? Do I pip myself out and do every indie and get the experience? Then again, working in front of 100 people is very different than working in front of 5,000. Do I sit and be patient? I don't want to be patient anymore. I want to show my worth and show what I can do. If I didn't think I could deliver, I wouldn't be saying this, but I know what I can do. I just want to contribute. So what do you think the future is going to be for Anthony Agogo? Do you think he's going to wrestle more matches in AW, Or do you think, like it sounds like he doesn't maybe want to do, should he work the indies and get more experience? Finally, CM Punk has paid a visit to NXT superstar Cora Jade. Now, Cora Jade recently suffered a torn ACL during a match with NXT Women's Champion Lara Valkyria at an NXT live event. The injury came just initially weeks after she made a return to WWE television at NXT deadline and is expected to keep her out of action for up to a year. 
Cora Jade recently underwent surgery on her knee and is now in the rehab process where she was visited by a number of visitors yesterday. Taking to social media, Cora Jade shared photos of herself with CM Punk as well as NXT stars Roxanne Perez and JC Jane along with the caption saying, quote, had some visitors today, hashtag bum ass knee. Of course, Punk is set for his first televised WWE match in 10 years tomorrow when he takes place, uh, takes part in the men's 2024 Royal Rumble match. But there you go, guys. This is latest pro wrestling news for you. Be sure to smash a like on the like button. Be sure to subscribe bottom right hand corner. As always, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and I'll speak for you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.